we're now joined by tonight's race winning driver, um, Corey Heim, the driver of the number 11 Tricon gar Garage Toyota. Um, Corey, could you take us through those last few laps for us? Yeah, uh, Ty certainly did a good job uh, making it almost to the end there, keeping me on my toes. And um, you know, I thought there for a second with four to go, once he kind of opened it back up, and I leveled out speed wise with him. I was going to be in trouble, but uh, sure enough, he I was, ran out coming to the white there, and I was able to get by him with the win. So I'm um, super thankful for my track on garage, shoulder racing, safe flight guys. Um, you know, definitely uh, feel like we were by far the best truck and wish we were able to prove it there in the last run and kind of had some strategy mixed up to make it interesting, I guess. But, um, you know, just glad we came up with the win, with the win today. Awesome. We're going to go ahead and go right to questions. Um, if you have a question, please raise your hand, state your name and affiliation, and we will get a wireless bike to you. We'll start in the back. Tim Moore, Motorsports Today. Corey, congrats on the win. At the start of the race, you were passing cars almost like they were standing still. I mean, in the first 12 laps, you passed 22 trucks on the track. I mean, that's got to be really, really fun for you, considering you had to start in the back with everything considered. Yeah, no doubt. It was it was a blast. You know, you're always a little bit nervous that someone's going to slip up and wipe you out. But uh, I knew once we had that issue in practice and we had to go behind the wall and not qualify, uh, starting at the tail of the field was was tough. And, then, you know, like I said, just being nervous with those guys slipping up or maybe making making a mistake in front of you. But uh, I had a lot of confidence in our speed, and I knew that if we could keep it clean, we'd, we'd be up front in no time. So uh, typically we, we don't qualify super well in the intermediates, but we race very, very well. So I'm kind of used to having to navigate and get through the field. But, you know, maybe – not that far back, but, you know, certainly uh, not, not anything I'm not used to. And I'm just wondering, a lot of guys said that they were surprised in how loose they were in that first stage. How, how did you feel individually with your truck? Yeah, this track seems to change a lot uh, compared to most uh, as far as, you know, weather dependency and how it changes your balance as the sun goes down and whatnot. So um, I knew that it was going to free up. I think we did the right things. We, we may have overfreed it a little bit to start the race, but overall, uh, you know, we kind of intended on that happening. And I think that's just experience at the end of the day. Uh, you know, maybe a new crew chief or a new driver won't kind of expect that. But, um, you know, I think this is my third fall Kansas race, maybe even fourth fall Kansas race in the truck series. So, uh, you know, that experience really pays off and, and things like that. We're going to go Steven and then Caleb. Steven, SunFrontage.com. Uh, Corey, with 52 to go, there was that split strategy. Um, what was the decision for you and Scott to take the uh, you know, pit under green and try and go, and go hard the rest of the race? What was the decision behind going that way? Yeah, I think just uh, being on offense all night was kind of our strategy, just being able to come through the field as quick as we did to begin the race and not wanting to put ourselves in a position to um, be on defense at the, the end of the race, I think, was, was the primary plan there. But um, like I said, Tide really kept me on my toes there at the end. But uh, we knew that that was going to be the, the right call. I mean, I think to start the stage, there were four laps short. So they're going to have to uh, really back down the pace and really hope that the, the leaders you know, the current leaders, I guess, when the green flag waved uh, would have some issues through that run. But uh, luckily, I was able to keep the lead and execute and, and be there at the end. And then you obviously had the uh, incident practice you sounded pretty confident before the race, but uh, you know, how did the truck feel? Did it feel kind of just completely good as new, basically? At least it looked the way it did. Yeah, the, the damage wasn't uh, wasn't anything but, but cosmetic, really. We were able to uh, buff everything out and get it basically back to the way we unloaded. So um, luckily, the, the tire blew right off the wall, and I was able to kind of sense that early and uh, not make the, the damage a lot worse. If we were to blow the tire in the middle of three and four or exit of four, we would have completely killed the truck. So uh, I guess a little bit fortunate in an unfortunate situation, but um, you know, able to uh, make the day a little bit longer for those guys. They worked hard on it and uh, spent basically all day fixing it up, but we were able to get it back to 100%. Go ahead, Daniel. Daniel McFadden, Frontage.com. So in the spring, you set the truck series mark for deepest start, uh, person to start a race and then win 13th. Uh, How does it feel to kind of double that and then some? tonight by starting 33rd. I actually didn't know that. Uh, that's pretty cool. But um, yeah, I mean, I feel like just the, the route we've taken with these intermediates, we've uh, just go, gone so downforce heavy and, you know, going to the racetrack, we don't necessarily qualify great. But I, I mean, we know we're going to race really good every time. So um, we're not too worried about that. And a lot of these intermediates now are, are very dynamic in the sense that you can race from bottom to top and be able to pass pretty easy. So uh, being able to do that is, is crucial. And we're able to uh, come through the field pretty quick. So, so you, you felt even starting dead last, you felt pretty good about your chances to get up to the front? 
Yeah, 100%. Uh, you know, I mentioned earlier just being a little bit nervous about someone in front of me making a mistake or, you know, there's always a, in the back of my mind that I'm going to make a mistake maybe. But um, just with all the experience I have in dirty air here and being able to navigate that and, and get through the field was um, certainly something I paid off tonight and I was able to, to execute on that. Any additional questions for Corey? We'll go to Bob. Bob Parker's Fox Sports at, I think it's 38 points above the cut line. Does that give you kind of, does that give you any sort of sense of comfort, I guess, going into Talladega that you can just race and, you know, yeah, if something happens, you'll be much closer to the cut line, but not necessarily be, you know, like a must win situation. Yeah, in a sense. I mean, we, we want to go out and get as many stage points as possible and still contend for the win. But at the end of the day, uh, it's all about making it to Phoenix. And we have when we have a race like Talladega in the mix, that um, is a lot out of your control. A lot of uh, other people's mistakes will end your day. I think it's very important to, to just uh, mind our own business and kind of uh, have a solid day more than less and hopefully put ourselves in position to, to, kind of to contend at the end. But um, as far as Homestead and Martins will go, I feel like you know business as usual for us. Try to qualify good, get as many stage points as we can, and, and try to win the race. So um, you know, definitely a, a bit of an eight ball there with, with Talladega uh, in the last round, but we're going to try to do what we normally do and have a clean day and, and execute. Go ahead, Steven. Sorry. Uh, Caleb Vessel, Speedway.com. Um, considering that tonight was an elimination race and kind of the history of the truck series, were you surprised with the lack of calamity tonight? It seemed fairly green throughout the whole race besides that, besides that one incident. Yeah, I think, you know, with the NASCAR scheduling, they normally schedule a more chaotic racetrack to be on the cut line. So I don't feel like Kansas is a generally a chaotic race. I mean, certainly any race can be chaotic at the end of the day. But, um, you know, this, this race in the truck series is typically one of our cleaner races. Um, so, yes, it's a cut line race, but we only send two home. And, you know, it's not necessarily a, a track that causes calamity just on the based on the way it's shaped and whatnot. So um, I didn't expect it to be a, a wreck fest by any means, but yeah, I guess you just never know with, with truck racing and uh, really just NASCAR in general.